Good morning, everybody. Um, hope you are well. Um, so sorry about everybody that was sick and that is sick. I hear the Omicron or Omicron or whatever variant um, will now leave everybody alone for a while and maybe die down even more. We've been praying for everybody and our pastors as well, Pastor Hansen, Sister Hansen. We pray that your recovery is quick and speedy and uh, we, miss, we miss you, miss seeing you and hearing the word from you. Let's pray. Lord, as we come to you tonight, we're so grateful for your word, we're so grateful for your spirit. Lord, we're so grateful for the truth that you have and place before us. We're so grateful, Lord, for the path we can walk in and leading and guiding us and taking us, Lord Jesus, to a purpose and a destiny that's found in you. Lord, I pray tonight that you will please come and speak through me, Lord Jesus. I pray that your spirit will come and blow upon the word and make it alive to us all. I pray that you will come and teach us and lead us and guide us, please, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I am... Um, I want to go a little bit over the study that Pastor Hansen taught. Um, the last part of the last study was, to me, really stood out. You know, I realized that um, having a word here, it makes a person very top-heavy. Even though you, you have a lot of word and you understand the word and we grasp it, we see it, and being here somehow makes it that when the wind comes and the test and the trials comes and the enemy comes, that we fall over very quickly. It's, it's almost like center of gravity. It, when the word sinks down and become a part of me, when I walk in it, when I... Um, move in it, when I embrace it, not just embrace it, not just understand it, but walk in it, then it becomes an anchor to me. It becomes a, a part of me. We've got no shortage of word. Um, I, you will agree with me, we've got a pastor that overflows. There's not a trickle from him, it's a gush. It overflows. I went back Every now and again I like to go back to old sermons and I went back and it's like there is so much and if I can just take that word that's been preached from here to here, I'm okay. Nothing will deter me, nothing will beat me, nothing will take me down. So I'm very grateful for, for our leaders tonight, this morning, there by you. I'm very grateful for everything we've received from them. I know it hasn't been easy, but wow, it has, it has definitely been so powerful. So I'm very grateful. I'm, I'm really grateful for the word. As grateful as what I am, I, what's the right word, maybe a little bit frustrated with myself. You know, if, if I would just run with this and keep on running with this. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, maybe it's just me, but you know, we, we receive something. Last time I was with you was Summit, that's so long ago already. But we receive something, we shout about it and we praise and we, man, we encourage this, this is it, this is it, this is my answer. And that lasts a little while. It's like it doesn't quite become part of me. Or I practice it, practice it, I see the results, I walk in it, I do it. And it's just, it's not settled, it's not sunk in. If I can think of a, of a ladder and you climb each rung, you know, each part of truth that we've been learning, you know, it's, it's another step. But as I climb, that step doesn't disappear, it stays in the ladder for me to step upon again and to stand upon. So maybe today we could just be.
be encouraged today to really press in harder if you're not already but press in harder and practice this we've got the answers like I said there's no shortage of answers there's no shortage of words so we have it it's just a matter of keeping on and continuing in using it so let's go the doctrines of devils Stanson spoke about the doctrines of devils this new age spirit that's on the earth it is a it's a it's a spirit that comes with words now words we all know words words strikes fear in us words calm us down words lift us up words can break us down words can bind us words can set us free everything God did everything Jesus did it's word he put out word his voice his breath his word so he he constantly when Jesus healed someone he spoke the word when Jesus rebuked the devil he spoke the word when Jesus preached and encouraged he spoke the word when Jesus broke down some pride in the Pharisees he spoke the word he speaks and no wonder when he comes back again he's going to come with a and when he comes with his armies, he's going to come with a sword that's coming out of his mouth. That sword out of his mouth is not a sword that's going to hang here and fight here. It's, it's word, it's breath, it's his authority, his statutes, his principles, his commands, his judgment. He speaks. So it's, a, it's a fight, it's a sword fight. It's a battle of swords, but it's a battle of words. It's a battle of testimony and you know, but we know this. We know life and death is in the power of the tongue, and we know all of this. But it's like continuing to to practice it. We are so I find we are so used to live a certain way and to feel a certain way and to be attacked and be oppressed, and we think it's normal. We think, ah, oh, I just don't feel so good today, or you know, yeah, I'm feeling a bit low, or yes, this happened, so. So we never, not never, but we hardly ever stand up and become aggressive towards the aggressor. Um, the kingdom of, uh, kingdom, of, kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent shall take it by force. So we defend, 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 defend when something hits us. And I'm starting to think, hey, what will happen if I see the enemy, I know he's here, I've been warned, I know the new age spirit's here, I felt the elephant sitting on my chest. I felt my head being cloudy and muddled and I felt they being pressed down by lies and not lies that people told me but you know lies from these spirits working in on a person. I felt the pressing, the pressing in and I stood <laughs> and I stood and I stood. And I worshipped, and I stood, nothing wrong with the worship and the standing. But what if I drew my sword and started speaking the truth and started countering these things when it happened? Now I eventually do it, but it's like there's casualties. I, I have to climb up again. I have to get my head above the waters again. I don't know. I don't know if you can relate I hope you can but these doctrines of devils this new age spirit that's coming with words uh, doctrine means instruction and teaching they come with their instruction and teaching they come with their lies it, it's a battle of a, a battle of words in Psalm 57 verse 4 I just quickly want to quote this to you he was talking here and he said my soul is among lions and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. So we see uh, that our tongues, it's a sharp sword. It, it, it can cut. Um, Revelation 19. Let's go to Revelation 19, verse 10. This actually blew my mind. I've... I was very grateful that I finally could understand the spirit of prophecy. Now, 
He said, and uh, John said, I fell at his feet to worship him. This spirit being, this fellow servant that's been at the throne of God. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. He said, see thou do it not. Don't worship for I am a fellow servant and um, of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus. Not my testimony, but the testimony of Jesus. It is the spirit of prophecy. Testimony, meaning the evidence of something, the record of something, the report of something that has been, something that has already transpired. Or already happened the evidence and the proof of something so you can only come and bring a testimony if you've had an experience if you were the one that saw and beheld and then you can come with that experience and you can give a testimony so the power is in the one with the testimony so he's talking about Jesus testimony now this was or this is to me such a great comfort because so many times in my life I have felt I don't have that testimony. I don't have that testimony. I don't have this testimony. I don't have that testimony. I don't need it. Amen. Oh yes, I need it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's not important to have your own testimony. Yes. But when I'm in a battle and I'm being oppressed and I'm being pressed down, there's a testimony that's better than my testimony and it's the testimony of Jesus Christ. Everything he's done, everything he's been through, everywhere he's walked, everything he's conquered, everything he's overcome. I can use that testimony and say, because Jesus did it, I can do it. Because Jesus walked there, he told me to follow in his footsteps, I can walk there. He's living in me, he's breathing in me. So the testimony of Jesus, oh, it's living and breathing. So I just need to follow and be encouraged that, hey, if he did it, he will do it in me. He will perform it, he will do it, he will work it in me. It's him, it's his testimony I can use. He overcame the world, I can overcome the world. He overcame sin, I can overcome sin. Oh, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. I can sit at the right hand of the Father. He went down to the, to the grave. Oh, sure, I can go down to the grave naturally and spiritually, but I will rise again just like he did. Oh, there's just so much in that. Think about that testimony. He, make a, he made a public show of principalities and power and powers on the cross. So when I'm crucified with Christ, guess what? It too will happen. There's so much. What has been will be. That prophecy, that divine inspired word that has been will be. I've got that assuredness. I've got that I can stand on it. I can hold on to it. That that has been, it will be again. So I don't have to fear. I don't have to fret. I just need to join. Join him. Join my mouth to His mouth. Join my walk to Him. Join my spiritual life to Him. Join to Him. It's there. It's there. And all the tools I need, it's there. The words are there. My tongue is there. He's put a Holy Ghost inside of you and me. He's, he's given us the Word. He's given us so much Word that we are. it's flowing out of our ears. So we've got everything we need. We just need to make it real. We just need to hold on to it and get a grip of it. So his testimony for him, Pastor Hans said, is prophetic for me. And this is, this is so awesome, so, so beautiful. So what he's been through, what he's conquered, I can too. I can overcome because he overcame. Um, Revelation 12, 11, you don't have to go there, you know it. Um, they overcame the dragon by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and not loving their lives unto death. So the word of their testimony, obviously they, they, their testimony joined to his testimony. They spoke it, they lived it, they breathed it out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It will show you whose testimony you believe and whose report you believe. Turn with me to James chapter 3. Now, we all know this scripture very well and 
We know what the tongue is. It's an unruly member. If you can bridle your tongue, you can bridle your whole body. Now, in verse 6, James 3, verse 6, he said, And the tongue is a fire. Not act as a fire. The tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on, f on fire of hell. So we see this as negative, and it is negative, hear me out. This is negative. It's describing the tongue as negative. But if there's a negative, there must be a positive. So the tongue is a fire that sets on course. The whole nature, my whole threefold being, my body, my soul, my spirit. So when my tongue is not speaking according to God's purpose and will, then of course this turning inside will be negative. But, so too I can set the motion to positive. I can set in motion a whole world of revival, of a joining to my Lord, of a overcoming, of a victory, of a standing upon the truth, fighting my flesh with truth, standing upon His promises, quoting the Scriptures, word, working with the Word through my mouth, so my tongue can also put me in a place where I'm turning positive, turning to its revival. It has to be. Where there's a negative, there has to be a positive. Um, turn, to me, turn to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Verse 27 and 31. Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from far burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue is a devouring fire. So talk about the Assyrian, verse 31. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, a picture of the Antichrist and Antichrist spirits and Antichrist in the spirits in this world. Shall the Assyrian be beaten down, which smote with a rod out of his mouth? His tongue is a devouring fire. It's not just a sword. It's a flaming sword. Revelation 11. Revelation 11 verse 3. 3. He says, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. My two witnesses, it's the same root word for testimony. The same two witnesses that will bring the evidence of something the record of something, something, the report of something that has been. These two witnesses is God's witnesses. Do you think Elijah and Enoch is going to stand there and say, Oh, Antichrist, listen here. I slayed 850, I killed 850 prophets and priests and, Oh, you, I'm big, I, I did this and my testimony. No, no. He comes and he gives Testimony of something that has been, something that has already transpired, something that has already happened, the evidence and proof of something. These two witnesses, they come and they prophesy. They speak of things that's already been. The prophecy, the testimony of Jesus Christ is a spirit of prophecy. And they prophesied against the Antichrist and the beast. Oh, and, oh rabba sakra, rabba kurabba sikra, nanahaya. It says in verse 4, These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. So they were standing before God of the earth. 
That word standing is the same word for standing or stood in Revelation 14. It means to remain in your allotted place. It means to be placed, to be put, to set, to be set up, to be established. It means to uphold the authority of a thing. They were standing before God, upholding the authority of God, sustaining it, uplifting it, standing in their place. I dare to say, when I'm not standing in my place, I'm not going to prophesy the testimony of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to testify and give a testimony of Him and what He's been through. I won't be in that place. I'll struggle. I'll, I'll try and do it myself. I'll fall. I'll be tripped up. But when I stand in my allotted place, upholding the authority of God instead of the lies and the falsehoods and the false doctrines, and the false teachings, when I uphold God's authority, God's word, God's voice, God's testimony, the testimony of Jesus Christ, of what has been, that is solid, that is sure, that is steadfast, I can prophesy when I stand before Him, standing in my allotted place. There were two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, Fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. A fire came out of their mouths. The tongue is a fire. And when that fire is sanctified and they give you giving a testimony, there's a fire that's burning in your mouth that's going to come out and it's going to devour and take care of the enemies. Oh, it is a flaming sword. You'll see why I say that. Jeremiah 5. Not now, but later. But Jeremiah 5. I hope I'm making sense. Jeremiah 5 verse, what did I say, 14. Wherefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word. Okay, if you go before that, the prophets prophesied and you know they have belied the Lord and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see sword nor famine. And the prophet shall become wind, and the word is, in, is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. Wherefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because the prophet ye speak this word, this falsehood. Behold, Jeremiah, you're going to come and speak this word against these prophets. I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. We know our fight is not against people, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, so I'm not saying we're going to devour people, but whatever spirit might be on people, or oh, when the word is in your mouth, there's a fire that's going to come out. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses. Again, the same root word for testimony. You shall bring an evidence of something. You will bring the record of something. You will bring the report of something that has been. You will bring the report of something that has already transpired and already happened. You will bring a report of the evidence. You will bring a testimony of the evidence and proof of something. What did he say? Unto me, unto the Lord, both in Jerusalem and all Judea. What do we need? We've got the Word, got the Holy Ghost, God baptized us with the Holy Ghost, with fire. So now again, when my 
mouth with my tongue is in the right place and under the right authority and speaking the right words, there's a fire that's going to come out of your mouth as you speak the word and speak the truth that's going to bear witness to the testimony of Jesus Christ. You'll be join, joining to that. Your whole course of nature will be spinning in the testimony of Jesus. You will set everything on fire around you. When enemies come up against you, they will be devoured. When the enemy comes with lies and with words and with false teachings, oh, there will be a, a counter to it. Before I get so beat down that I struggle to come up again. It's possible to get up, but who likes struggling to get up? We can just do it from the beginning. Now in Revelation 11, you can just go read, read it yourself, verse 7, it says that they were giving a testimony and yes, they had to be killed and they rose again and all that, but they were giving a testimony. You see, they were testifying, prophesying, giving a testimony, prophesying with the spirit of prophecy about what has been, what has already transpired and happened. I'm telling you, devils don't like it. I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to share with you this. When I came to the Lord, I did a lot of bad stuff before then. I won't go into details. But it opened up a lot of doors for demonic activities in my life. Plus, my father, my natural father, he, bless his heart, my late, late father, he was a Freemason. So, that put spirits on us. And as I was denouncing, I was, they were casting out demons and, you know, rebuking demons. And I was confessing and repenting and being set free, there was a time <clears throat> where there's a prayer that I was denouncing some Freemason things that my jaw, those demons came and shut my, it, it just shut my mouth. I couldn't, I couldn't open it. It was like a power, a force pushing like this and I couldn't open it. And the people prayed and said, okay, speak it, speak it, I had to speak it. This one, they didn't rebuke, I spoke it, and this thing left. The other thing, you heard Pastor Hansen say, what you hear and how you hear. I'll never forget this, Colossians, you don't have to go there, but Colossians 2 verse 15, and talks about Jesus having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. On the cross, he made a show of the principalities and power. So, I, the guy took out the Bible. It, it was a battle. It was a battle that day. The 4th of November, <coughs> many years ago. And he sat with his Bible, and as he was reading this, I heard Colossians 2.15. And my ears just, just closed. Those demons blocked my ears. They didn't want me to hear this. And they prayed for my ears and it opened. And me taking this, believing this, I know, I knew that He overcame these principalities and these powers that was trying to keep me bound and trapped. So there's so much power in it. In what I hear, be careful what you hear. What I listen to can either set me free or bind me up. Whatever I speak, same, can set me free or bind me up. Just wanted to share that with you. Luke chapter 14. Four, sorry. Luke chapter 4. Verse 18. <laughs> Oops. <clears throat> Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Uh, 
saying that I, I don't I don't even begin to to profess that I understand what God has given us I see it but I need to practice more I say practice but I need to walk in it more I need to become part of my life especially in these end times and God has baptized us with the Holy Ghost what kind of power did he put inside of us to bear witness and to testify when the enemy shall come in like a flood when the flood of lies will come and sweep over this earth the Spirit of the Lord the Holy Ghost that you and I are baptized with will raise up a standard against it oh how can it not involve our mouths? How can it not involve us taking our swords with a flaming fire, professing and proclaiming the truth as we go to keep ourselves safe, but also to take territory and to let the Eden expand and let people be set free because there are still people that need to come in and they need to hear the truth. So I need to stand Oh, when the Spirit of God gets a hold of you and me, we're going to stand. And when we stand against that, we'll raise up a standard against it. It's, a, it's meeting force with force. There's, no gonna, there's not going to be marshmallows or bubble wrap or anything or pillows. It's not going to be a pillow fight. It's going to be force meeting force. And yes, you will be in the minority. But no, you will not be the weaker one. You will be the one with the testimony of Jesus Christ that He triumphed, he, he triumphed over them already. He's already conquered. He's already overcame. So when I come with that prophecy like those two witnesses standing with fire coming out of their mouth when the enemy comes against them, testifying, standing before God, testifying the torment on those that believe a lie and the torment on those that doesn't want to hold on to the truth and believe and they just come and say, this is who Jesus is, this is what God did. Man, why not now? Why not now? <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Verse 18, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay, a lot of preaching, a lot of words, deliverance through words. So much words in there. Now preaching there, it means, get a hold of this. Don't think preaching is reserved just to me or for the preachers. No, you, you get into trouble, you shut your door and you start preaching. You start preaching to every beast and every devil out of hell that's trying to get a hold of you. You start preaching. You'll see now why. Preaching means a proclamation. A proclamation means... An official, formal, public announcement. It means to declare. It, sorry, it means to declare defiantly in speech or writing. It means to praise or glorify openly and publicly. It means to announce, to advertise, to release, to sound to sound a trumpet. So when you come and you give a proclamation, which basically what preaching is, you declare defiantly in speech or in writing. Woo! Rabasar! Come defiantly. You openly come in public. You make it known. This is what I believe. This is who I believe in. And this is who He is. Man, I feel the Spirit of God. Oh, You openly come. When the enemy presses in and the Spirit raises up a standard, you go and you proclaim openly. This is what Jesus did. And what was shall be. Because Jesus did, I can. Because He overcame, I can overcome. He humbled Himself, I can humble myself. Oh, He, ra he rose up, He learned obedience to the things He suffered, I can. But hey... He's got life and life more abundantly and overflowing. So who wants to sit with the spirit of death? You don't have to. I'm sorry, I know I'm shouting, but I said to my wife, I can see 
uh, everybody sits always in the same place, so I can almost see everybody sitting there. Um, but I am excited about this because I'm, I'm going to do better. I, I am going to do better. Watch me. I'm going to do better. Watch this space. Turn to Proverbs 18. We all know this one. Let me remind you. A man's belly, verse 20 and 21, sorry. Proverbs 18, verse 20 and 21. Sorry, I'm excited. A man's belly. That word belly is the seat of hunger. It is his womb. We know that things grow in a womb. Shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. So I'm not only getting filled by what others are saying and what the enemy is saying, I'm also being filled by what I'm saying. And I'm not talking about speaking mom, but you know, you know, we are being filled either negative or positive. Verse 21, death, that word death means ruin. It means to destroy, it means, a, it means a state of death, it means to perish, it means to have one executed and to die prematurely by the neglect of moral conduct. Life means fresh water, revival, renewal. Reviving of the springtime when new life comes out. Death and life, new springtime, um, maintenance, revival, renewal, restoration to be made whole, are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Fruit is produce or offspring. And power is um, fellowship and force. So when I, I love the fellowship of the words, that brings forth fruit to me. So when I get into a battle, when I get into a situation, a test, a trial, none of us here, I'm sure, will disagree that we don't hear a lot of things. We hear a lot of lies. And m many times, it's mostly from the inside. There's these lies popping up. There's these words popping up. These fears popping up from our Zion. Because of past experiences. Because of things that happened. And the enemy jumps on that. And he comes with flattering words. To try and draw us away and give us a reward for if we don't deal with this. So if we can speak wrong, then He has us. But when we speak right, He cannot touch us. Speaking right, prophesy the testimony of Jesus. Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6, still have a little bit of time. Really pray everybody gets healed now and recover from this stupid virus. So things can just turn back to, to normal again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. I'm sure what I'm going to say now is not the only way, but I often wondered, he said in verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. How am I strong in the Lord? I've got climbing to Him. Grow up into Him. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might. 
when my testimony, when I come with a spirit of prophecy, when I'm strong in the Lord, I'm strong in what He did. I'm strong in what He conquered. I'm strong in His power. I'm strong in His blood. I'm strong in His spirit. I'm strong in His everything He is. I'm strong in that by the spirit of prophecy because He did, I can. And I join myself to that because He did, I can. Because He did this, I can. Because He did this, I can. So now I'm strong, not in my testimony, not in my abilities, not in my wealth of knowledge, not in my wealth in money, not in my whatever, not in my carnal carnality or even in my spirituality. I'm strong in Him. My testimony is in Him. How could two witnesses stand before God in the midst of chaos? The beast and the Antichrist and his prophets and all, all this filth and death and torment that's going on. And they're standing there prophesying, giving a testimony, giving a testimony. The spirit of prophecy, let me tell you about what was. And they, how could they do that with fire coming out of their mouths if they weren't in his strength? Then he says, put on the whole armor of God. You know this? Verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now that word for sword, I had a look at it and I was curious. And it means a knife. It means a, um, a punishment. But it also means a quarrel. It's a hand-to-hand -hand struggle. It's a war of words. It means to lay waste, to parch, to destroy, to attack, and to smite down. It's literally a war of words. <laughs> That's what a quarrel is. It's a war of, war of words. So he says, take the sword of the Spirit. Take from the Spirit, the Spirit of prophecy, the Spirit, take the Word. This, the, this, the Spirit is not going to speak against this Word. It's going to use this Word. It's going to bring out this, quote this, but look at that. It's leading and guiding us into truth, into all truth. So it's not leading me into falsehoods or in conspiracies or in opinions or in ideas. It's leading me into all truth. So the sword of the Spirit, a sword, according to this meaning, when you come, you've got a sword in your mouth. And a sword, we saw that the enemies, people have swords. So when they come and they start speaking against you, what happens? It starts draining you. And you're going, you, you literally, if you're not guarding and, and protecting, and you almost run dry. You run dry. It, it lays you waste. It weighs down on you, this war of words. But now he says, take this. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Speak it. Jesus came with the sword in his mouth. His armies are going to come with the sword in their mouth, which is the word of God. You speak a testimony. You speak the word. Oh yes, you can think upon it. But man, when you put it out there and you hear what you are saying, what your heart is believing, there's power in it. You're sending worlds in motion. We've had those studies. You're putting things in motion. You're starting to let things turn and things start to happen. So when you speak negatively, negative worlds are spun into motion. But when you speak the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and the testimony of Jesus Christ, this Word is so... The Jesus is on every page. There, there's this... This is world that's coming into motion that is overcoming, that's victory, that is closeness to God, that is towards your purpose and your destiny because of the right testimony that you are speaking. So instead of defending, defending, defending and, and ducking and getting out of the way, now he says, take the sword. Take it. Take it to the parking lot. Just go for it. Get the testimony out there. 
engage in this warfare. Fight for your children. Fight for your fellow brothers and sisters. Fight for your pastors. Fight for your congregation. Just engage. Fight for your spiritual life. Fight for your uh, fight. Fight for the unsaved. Fight. Fight for testimony's sake. He deserves it. Jesus deserves it. Fight with it. Take the ground. Take a, go and conquer where you are at your workplace, where you are at school, where you are at varsity, where, wherever you are. Even at church, go there. We all know sometimes, well in our church, sometimes uh, 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 you can feel the opposition. You feel this. there needs to be a breakthrough. Take the sword and go after the enemy. Am I making sense? I hope so. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49 verse 1 and 2. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother, hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. Revelation 1.16 You know that Jesus, in his mouth, there is a sharp two-edged sword. Revelation 2, verses 12, you can read 12 to 16, he says again, you know, he will come and fight. Those that believe the doctrine of Balaam, he will come and fight with his mouth. Balaam came and he caused Balak to cast the stumbling block in front of his people, causing God's people to fornicate powerful what the meaning is of fornication given to art to fornicate and this is what this doctrines of devils they come and teach us causing a stumbling block to fornicate with the world and Jesus will come with the sword in his mouth Jeremiah 23 Verse 29. He says here, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Is not my word like as a fire? So when you speak it, there's a fire, a consuming fire. We have the studies on the zeal of the Lord. You can imagine standing in your allotted place before God, upholding His authority, sustaining, being a pillar, upholding His authority, being, standing in my set place with the spirit of prophecy, prophesying, the testimony of Jesus Christ, the fire, with a zeal, with a passion, jealous for your God, jealous for His ways, His word, His plan, His purpose, His will, His destiny, Him as a person, zealous for Him, against the things that might be coming out of you that's not godly, or that's trying to press in on you that's not from God, and you come with, the word, the fire coming out of your mouth. The fire as you proclaim and you testify like the two witnesses. You bring in the testimony. The word is a fire in our mouths. If only we will use it. If only we would proclaim it. If only we would speak it. If only we would make a defiant proclamation against the enemy. I love that. Being defiant. Oh man, we know how to be defiant. Woo! I'm going to keep quiet. 
But what will happen if we defiantly declare openly, publicly, this is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Whether you are alone, whether you are wherever you are, when those lies and the enemy starts coming, and you just get defiant a bit. You feel the death setting in, and it's not, it's not from God. You feel that death setting in, you feel yourself running dry, because we listen to the wrong voices within or without. What will happen if the people of God would get defiant against the demonic forces in the air? Get defiant against our own flesh? Get defiant against our old man? Get defiant against the Jebusites in, a, in us? Just get defiant, but not just defiant, defiant proclaiming the truth. Defiant having the word in our mouths. Defiant speaking the true word of God. Defiant in uh, prophesying, getting under the inspired word of God with the Holy Ghost. Man, I'm so excited about, I've got a new excitement about the Holy Ghost. And I'm, 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 I'm excited about the Holy Ghost. You know, God the Holy Ghost and leading us in the Spirit of God raises up a standard and we get defiant against the lies. I'm not talking about political stuff and, oh man, COVID stuff and all of this stuff. I'm talking about God's kingdom that is suffering violence. I'm talking about the kingdom within that is trapped by the Jebusites. I'm talking about getting defiant by using the truth against that, but not hiding the truth, putting it publicly. This, this is not who I am. This is who I serve. Let me show you the praises of Him who has called me out of darkness into His marvelous light. Let me be a praise unto Him. Now showing Jesus, pointing to Jesus. Pointing to his testimony, joining to his testimony, being joined to his testimony with a sword and a flame, a sword of fire coming out and devouring and scattering the enemies around us. A battle is usually not five minutes or an hour. If it's a formidable enemy, it takes a while to conquer and overcome. So don't give up. Don't give up. We need to be more aware, or maybe it's just me, it needs to be more aware of the enemy pressing in, because he comes in sly, comes in with flatteries, comes in next moment you know it, then you need to, st you're on a back foot. And if we would just stand and, and take the sword in our mouths, his word is a fire that will consume there's no reason we should, we should go astray. Revelation chapter 19. You shall remember in um, Genesis chapter 3, Verse, uh, what's the last verse? 24. Uh, God put the cherubims with a flaming sword in front of the Garden of Eden. He took man out because man fell, and th those swords were there to protect the way of the tree of life. I'm sitting with a sword. With a flaming sword, a sword with fire on it in my mouth, and I can use it to destroy and to break down, or I can use it to stand for and to protect the way of the tree of life in me and his ways and what he's doing in me and what he's doing in you and where he's leading us and guiding us and 
His way. It's just who He is. Revelation 19 verse 13 And He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and His name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed Him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean. And out of His mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. Verse 21, And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. We've learned about our purpose and returning back to the beginning and we were made in the likeness and image of God and then we fell and now the second Adam came so that we again can be in the likeness and image of God because as He is in the likeness of God, He came to transform us, change us, conform us, squeeze us into shape, bring to birth the man-child in us so that we too can go back to the likeness and image of God. So he has a sword in his mouth, then what about me? Then I should have a sword in my mouth. <clears throat> I think I'm going to quit there. I hope I made sense. I hope I didn't confuse you. It's always such a privilege to share the Word of God. and It's, um, it's never to be taken for granted. But we are, we are definitely in a, everybody can testify and everybody has been feeling it, I'm sure. We are definitely in the times that has been spoken of and prophesied of. And, but we've got everything we need. We've got everything we need. God has given us His Son. He's given us the Holy Ghost. He's given us His name. He's given us, he's given us everything. He's given us everything. Plus He's given us I believe pastors after his own heart. So it's a privilege to to be called this way and to be joined to a spiritual family that stands and that proclaims the truth even though when it's not um, popular. So I'm really grateful for our leaders and for what they've been doing and you know also just for everybody in we could call it the home front, I suppose, the central church. Um, yeah, thank you for also being there. And we all are just part of, of this, what God is doing. And I'm just grateful tonight. I really am. I think we, we don't show our gratitude enough. And uh, it's something that, that gets neglected so often. But I'm not taking this for granted. I'm not taking what we've been learning for granted. I'm not taking where we are for granted and um, I'm looking forward to to the future what God is doing and man I'm looking forward to that restoration of David's tabernacle in my life and, and I'm also looking forward to summit sometime let's hope it happens We're praying for everybody we pray everybody's feeling better and Pastor Hansen, Sister Hansen that I know of that, that is sick as well and really pray you recover quickly and, and speedily and make a full recovery and so also everybody else. Love you all. God bless you and